All right, buddy. I'm Johnny Scoville. This is Chase D. Went a couple of minutes early today. I'm working with a new laptop. Want to make sure I didn't have any glitches, but it appears I don't. I suppose I could log off and come back on in 10 minutes, but you know what? Kind of no point in that. We'll just keep it going. So we're going to wait a few minutes. I'll have people join us. There is Jeremy Bell. Good to see you, Jeremy. Went on a little bit early. Got the new laptop, just making sure it's working. Be free. Good to see you. Vernon, Texas. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to do today, you guys, we're just going to do a little family time, a little q and I got a couple of things. I'm not sure what I want to do. I have this. I have Hot Pods Night Tonic Garlic Hot Sauce, which sounds really good, and I love that. And then I've got this. Russell Williams from The Grim Reaper. Black Widow. So I'm not quite sure what, what I'm going to do. Um, we'll have a bunch of people log in, and then we'll do some Q and A, and we'll just go from there. Hope you guys are going to come join me this weekend in uh, Fort Mill. Now I was waiting on some uh, waiting on some uh, pods today that were supposed to come in the mail, and the mail mail truck's not here yet. I got a funny feeling they aren't coming. So, it is what it is. Uh, I should get a Reaper pod bead. I have one, actually. I have one. Uh, Dame, a buddy of mine, Damon, from it only burns twice. Got Gave me one, and it goes right here. But the problem is, it's heavy. It's made of lead, and it kind of swing. If I move my head fast, it swings around. It just kind of feels strange, so. Um, I'm on way early, you guys. Seven minutes early. Anybody have any wild questions you want to ask me before the the main show gets started? I want you guys to tell me how you think the quality of the stream is. I'm using a different laptop. Hopefully, it doesn't have anything to do with the laptop. It's just the internet. So we will see. <laughs> All right. So, um. One moment, please. Um, I don't know what to do. Let you guys decide. We've got Hot Pods Night Tonic Garlic Hot Sauce. Powerful garlic and Indian spices. Uh, heat, uh, super hot chilies. Sounds like it could be a good one. So we got this. This is kind of a good one to do because uh, today um, or yesterday, Brian Chirapi from uh, Willie Pete's sent me uh, the new white version, the white mare. So I'll be reviewing that. Maybe I'll do both. Yep. When you eat as much hot stuff as you do, your tolerance will go up, Jeremy. All right. Got some people tuning in now. All right. Welcome, guys. I'm Johnny. This is Chase the Heat. So I don't know what to do today. I was just sharing with a few people that got on earlier. Got a couple different choices. Got some candy bar, some chocolate, dark chocolate too, with ghost chilies, essential oil of geranium and lemon. You guys know what essential oil of geranium is? Because I don't. The Reaper sent out a creature in the dead of the night with one single purpose to enslave their or her victims. One bite and she'll own you. Be aware of the Black Widow. Let's open this thing up. You guys want to? There's the mail, dude. Alex is late today. All right, we'll do this first. We'll take a look at this. Black Widow, dark chili chocolate. Specialist chili products, heat that comes for you. Uh, he's got purgatory. I have that also, which is white chocolate, which is white chocolate, ghost, uh, chilies, mixed spices, essential oils of Geronimo. Then there's the Hellraiser, which is milk chocolate, which is, uh, ghost chilies, cinnamon, and, 
chilies. Sweet orange and clove. But this is his dark chocolate. So here we are. Let's take a look at this and see what it says on the back for ingredients. Dark chocolate, cocoa mass, 70% sugar, cocoa butter, uh, emulsifier, soy lecithin, natural vanilla, essential oils of lemon, essential oil of geranium, ghost chili powder, soluble for uh, suitable for vegans. Pretty awesome, guys. If you're vegans, you can do this. Allergy advice for allergens, including cereals containing gluten. Uh, see ingredients in bold. Not seeing any bold. Uh, storage, store to cool, dry place after opening. Suggested uses, eat it on its own. Make a delicious, spikely, spicy chocolate fondant. Uh, Matt. Johnny, been watching your content for a long time. You are an inspiration of the masses. Love you, brother, and keep the chaos that is in the fire. That is the fire. Thank you. Appreciate you guys watching. Hi, Tom. I uh, love the show. Appreciate you watching, you guys. You know, it's funny. This is your show. You guys get that, right? I think that's why the channel is working. It, you, it is your show. I told the story a lot. The week I started the channel, I started it. Like four days later, somebody said, I'm a big fan. I love your stuff. And I was like, Kind of change things and from that day forward. It really is it's your channel more than it is my channel. And I'm good with that. So thank you for being a part of thank you for allowing me to be a part of your show. All right. We're gonna do the dark uh, the black widow. Now, for those of you guys that have been paying attention, the chili cherry nightmare white version comes out this uh it's already in the mail. So I should have it uh I don't think it's gonna be in the mail today, probably tomorrow. If it is here tomorrow, I'll probably review it tomorrow night. All right. So here we go. Russell Williams is a good good guy. I met him in uh, London a couple week, uh, last week. Black Widow. He's a good dude. He's got some great sauces. Uh, I love his uh, – he's got a great marketing sense. I love the names of his sauces, everything. Love that pack. Good to see you. Um, all right. I want a, a white mare. Here we go, guys. So from Russell Williams, dark chili chocolate. Wait, hold on. Wait a minute. Smell the heat. You get that dark, kind of that bitter dark chocolate aroma. If I can smell the ghost. All right, you guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. I'm Johnny Scoville, and we're going to eat a little chocolate. This is good. I wouldn't say this is a challenge bar. I suppose anything is a challenge if you go after it that way. But it's great flavor. I say it's not a challenge bar because it doesn't say, here's your time, you know, just for snacking. Now, sorry. The flavor on this is good. Now, you guys know with dark chocolate, there's varying levels of dark, right? This almost looks like milk chocolate. Not knocking it because the taste is fantastic. But I like really, really dark chocolate. Um, but great flavor, ghost pepper flavor. No doubt, you know, heat that comes for you. Pretty legit. The reason I say that, the heat in this comes for you. It's not like you're going to escape it. If you put this in a candy tray and a little kid got a hold of it, you'd be freaking out wondering what he ate until you learned. And once you figured out, hey, give him some milk. But this would get your attention. Um, let me think about the heat from that. Great flavor. Hi, Jasmine. All right. If you're somebody who doesn't ever eat anything hot, 
you'd enjoy this. See, the, long, the higher your tolerance, the longer your window to enjoy this. I got a big, wide, really high tolerance, so I can enjoy I can eat the whole bar and enjoy it. If you're brand new to this and you've never eaten anything hot, you'd probably enjoy it for that long. You'd be like, wow, it tastes great. Oh, it's hot. And it would get your attention. You know, I think for a non-chili head, this should be probably a... Again, it's a weird thing. I think it would probably be like a seven or eight, maybe even an eight. But here's the deal. Somebody who's not at, who's not at all accustomed to eat, eating hot could eat one of these and say it's a 10. It's going to freak out, you know. So it would probably be at least a seven or eight for a non-chili head. You guys on the Scoville Squad eating heat? Um... We've got five. Maybe a five. But delicious. Um, you know, I, I always forget to do this. Thank you for coming and uh, enjoying it, uh, hanging out with us tonight. It's a family show. There are families that watch us, more families than not. So we always keep it uh, positive, family friendly, no cursing, no politics, no religion. But positive, happy stuff. That's what we're all about. Frostbite, good to see you. Left eye pat. Sister lives in Hardin, Kentucky. Uh, cool. Uh, Nedved Petra. Hey, Frosh. From Belleville. Good heat, though. Legit. Now, here's the deal. Ernie, I don't particularly like milk chocolate. In fact, I, I don't prefer milk chocolate so much that if I didn't have to review it, I probably wouldn't eat it. Just don't really like, don't know what it is. I just don't like milk chocolate. I prefer dark, dark chocolate. The dark chocolate's in the Chili Cherry Nightmare is much darker than this. You can just tell by the lighting. It almost looks like a milk chocolate. Doesn't it kind of? See from the lighting there. If I had the chili cherry nightmare side by side, you'd see the chili cherry nightmare is a lot darker. Not knocking it because this is good. But the reason I'm bringing it up now again is that when I have the uh, their milk chocolate version, if this is as light as it is, I'm worried that I'm not going to really like the uh, – I may not favor the uh, milk chocolate one very much. I just don't like milk chocolate. We'll see. It does look like milk. Thank you. Uh, Ned Ben, I have, <clears throat> I don't think I've tried Maruga Madness from Cajun. It's a pretty great company. Though. Left iPad, I'm interested in pods, but here's my dilemma. My travel schedule. Um, I'm good. Thank you, Casper. Um, my travel schedule. I leave Thursday for, um, South Carolina. Megan. Hi, girl. Good to see you. Um, I'm leaving for Thursday. I leave for uh, South Carolina. I'm there until I'll be back home Tuesday. Um, I then have like like four or five days, and then I'm leaving, going to Salt uh, to uh, Denver, Colorado. I'm there for a couple the weekend, and then I come back. I'm only home for like five or six days or so. Let's see. Four days, and I go to, to uh, Manila. Excuse me. I'm in Manila for a week. When I come back, I'm only home for like a week, and then I go to Tampa. And then I'm in Tampa for the week for like four days or so. And then when I come home, I'm only home for like a week, and then I go to, to uh, London again. So it's hard. I don't want uh, – the last thing I would want is pods to get mailed here that aren't going to be eaten, you know, and I don't want to waste any peppers. So – you know, hard to believe you took second to the Chili Queen. Yeah, me too. Listen, she's a great competitor. I am going to do my best to beat her this next uh, meeting. We're trying to put together right now. We were trying to put it in Manila. That would be the thriller in Manila. Ricker, good to see you. Um, didn't plan it soon enough. Not enough time to put it together since Manila is just around the corner. Tried to scoop it in and slide it under the door in Tampa. No go there either. Um, but, uh, we will meet again and listen, I'm going to beat her next time. That's all there's to it. My age is 53. 
But it's a weird 53. It's like a Mustang. An old Mustang. The body looks okay, but they stopped the odometer a long time ago. There's a lot of miles on that engine. It's kind of me. I am a healthy 53. I'm pretty healthy. There have been aspects of my uh, times of my life where I wasn't nearly as healthy as I am now, so that's for sure. I'm going to have one more piece of this chocolate. I'm digging it. Uh, no, it wasn't because of the floral, Luke. Um, it wasn't the heat either. The heat wasn't the problem. The problem was gastric disturbances. I mean, I hate to do this to you and call you out publicly, Caster, but you're wrong. Spices don't harm you in the long run. You shouldn't put that kind of stuff out there because it's not true. Um, capsaicin and uh, many spices are great for you. Anything you do in moderation is going to be okay. Anything you do that in a, out of moderate, you know, without moderation is a problem. But you can't say that spices are going to harm you in the long run because that's just not the truth. There you go. Uh, do peppers really relieve pain? Absolutely, they do. No two ways about it. Great pain reliever. Um, actually, uh, it's amazing. I use it for. I had back pain. I broke my back years ago, so I've had back pain forever, and it's very, very helpful for it. So, uh, chocolate spice doesn't go well together. Have you tried it, uh, No Malo? Huh? Because y'all try it. It tastes really good. I think it's amazing. And the funny thing about it is, it's, you know, obviously it's a thing. Or they, there wouldn't be so many uh, chocolate companies spicing them up. And I mean, you even see it in mainstream stores, Lind or Lund, whatever that is. They've got a pepper uh, chocolate. It's lousy. The hottest thing is the label. But um, Let's see, my mom thinks I'm crazy, so she showed me an article about eating spicy things give you dementia. Uh, yeah, but here's the thing. I did see that, and you know what? I laugh, too. Something's going to get me, and something's going to make me forget your name, but it ain't going to be capsaicin or spice. Um, here's the deal with that. Go, go back 10 years. and uh, Go back 20 years. In the last 20 years, you've seen people say, oh, coffee's good for you. Oh, my God, coffee's going to kill you. Don't drink a lot of it. Oh, coffee's good for you. It's going to kill you. Now they're saying you can drink 20 cups of coffee a day. And you're good. So I don't buy that. It's the the sky's not falling. It's not. Um, uh, let's see if all the hot peppers I've had, Rick wants to know, which one do I enjoy the most? Flavor-wise, I don't like floral. Hey, Paul, good to see you, buddy. I don't like floral at all. It's not a big deal with me. Um, but I do like uh, yellow paws. They seem more fruity and citrusy to me. Um, Tommy, we don't talk about weird things like that on this channel. And that's it. So if you post like that again, I just don't want to see weird things like that on the channel. That's all. We're not going to do that. Uh, the aftermath can hurt. Uh, coffee is proof there's a God. He loves us. I, you know, I, I like coffee a lot. I, you know. You know coffee I've been getting into lately? Oh, Death Wish coffee. You guys had Death Wish coffee yet? Man, oh man, you guys haven't lived until you've had some Death Wish coffee. Super delicious. Hot as can be. Or excuse me, uh, uh, caffeinated as can be. Way more than, than most. But the flavor, there's no bitterness. The flavor is awesome. Totally into it. Yeah, Yellow Pods are great. Um... What I've been doing with Death Wish Coffee is I put some tincture in it in the morning. That works a lot. Uh, Pee Wee, long way. First time growing Trinidad scorpions or any pepper, really. Any tips? Yeah, I'm good at eating them. Never have. Uh, but I, I am great at eating them. Um, I got a nice yard. I got I got room. I could probably plant. It's really funny. I used to think, oh, I could plant three or four. I could probably plant 70 pepper plants back here. For real. But I'm just not around a lot. You know what I mean? Chris Driscoll says, curious what a chili and peanut butter would be like. PB and chocolate go together. Maybe chili and peanut butter. Absolutely. Chili and peanut butter go well. I have taken <clears throat> many, many a time. Uh, 
cut out a, take a jalapeno split it, remove the seeds, pack it with peanut butter, munch on that like you would with celery. I do that all the time. It's very good. Um, how do peppers stay edible? How long? And is there a way to preserve them that you know of? Um, you know, I'm not quite sure uh, how long they last. It's probably like any vegetable. The minute you pluck it, it starts to degrade and die on you and rot. It's kind of the way it works. Um, what, a, a surefire way to get a longer life out of them is immediately refrigerate them. That will help. Do you have a winter weather there? Yeah. It's so obviously summer here. Yeah, there's a winter, but it's weird though because in Reno here, like one day, like the December, the like snow on Christmas Day, it's really kind of strange. Uh, Dossman, shout out from Hamilton, Ontario. Good to see you, Dossman. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, in fact, I've got an, uh, an, my aunt, uh, Jean, passed away recently, about a year ago. But Aunt Jean, she lived in this town since '55, and she said on two different occasions she saw it snow on July on uh, snow July 4th. Two different times. So weird stuff happens in Reno. There's a, a winter for sure, but it's only a moderate inconvenience. Can I give you three hot sauces you need in your stock? Edge Crusher. Yes. Here are three hot sauces that you need in your stock. You need Exoresco from Burns and McCoy. You need that. You need... You need fear this um, from Hellfire. Um, you need Swampadelic from Primo's Peppers. Got to have those three. Um, I need to get a TSA checkpoint. Since you're so much, I would have stopped and with for my nitrates. <laughs> Paul, you know it's really funny. I I just have this look. Maybe it's this. The goatee, but I just kind of have this thing that says, check that, dude. Uh, they claim there's a hotter pepper than the Reaper. Is that true or not? Absolutely, it's true. No two ways about it. Plenty hotter. Not plenty hotter, according to Guinness, but Guinness doesn't eat peppers. I do. And all my friends eat peppers. And, and Reapers are hot. No, I'm not knocking that. Fiery Fool is good too, Tom. Reapers are hot. I've had chocolate bootlas that were way hotter than Reapers. I've had seven pot primos that were hotter than Reapers. I've had bootla scorpion, BTR, seven pot brown, fatality jigsaw, all significantly hotter than uh, a Reaper. It's true. Um, are Reapers kind of crispy? Because the one I ate was kind of soft. But no black seeds. It should not have black seeds. Black mold is really bad. You guys, if you see black seeds, don't eat it. That's why I cut them open always and kind of show you. Number one, you want to see what's hurting me. But, I, you know, you don't want to eat black seeds. I ate a pepper once. I wish I could remember what video it was. It's way back in season one. And I ate a pepper. Everybody's watching. I didn't cut it open. And, I mean, I didn't like three or four, so I knew what the peppers I was eating. I chewed it up and bit it, and I mean, it exploded like a like a like a giant bug gusher. It just kind of exploded in my mouth. I was like, I knew it wasn't. There was something residing in that pepper. Didn't really dig it so much. Um, but I've had peppers that were super crisp, uh, reapers that were super crunchy and crisp, and some that it depends on what time you get them. You know, listen, um, Tobias Dorf from Germany mailed me about, I don't know if you guys have been around long enough to watch it. Uh, about two years ago, he sent me some, uh, I can't remember the name of the Reaper, Monster Reaper, some kind of Reaper twisted little cross he had that were so crispy, and so sweet, so crunchy. And he mailed them from Germany, guys. It's crazy. You know what I mean? Germany. He picked, he must have picked them or I had like, I picked them immediately boxed them and just, I mean, Bugs Bunny style. He just it, it takes off and it's automatically back. It was like, it was amazing. Anyway, what's my next overseas trip? Uh, Manila in about two, three weeks. And then in um, about a month and a half, I go back to London. So I'm getting good at that. I'm getting good at the travel. You know, I think that uh, I didn't think so at first, but I think to a degree, jet lag and recovering from it. Uh, I think that there's. <laughs> there's no trick. Ah, there's some tips. 
but I think it's something they actually get good at. I think it's kind of like eating a pepper. If you've, if you've never eaten a super hot and you eat a reaper, it's like, kind of can put you in a panic mode because you don't know what to, what to expect. First time you have jet lag, it's like devastating. Oh, it's going to sleep. It's, you know, it's, it's tough. Then after you've had peppers, you kind of know what to expect. I've, I've, you know, I kind of know what to expect now with the jet lag. So it doesn't seem to bother me too much. Um, pepper X. I've had sauces with Pepper X, but nobody's eaten a Pepper X pepper yet. I will. So I thought about reviewing this too. But I think I'm going to wait and do this, have this for its own review. I like the label a lot. Isn't that cool? Sean, you never relax on a plane. I have trouble sleeping on a plane. I can't do that very well. Um, doesn't really matter how tired I am. Uh, I've seen your vids on cheese, but what is your favorite cheese, Megan? Um, I would say that um, I ate a, a cheese in uh, New Zealand called B.O., which means best old. It was an old, old, old. I can't remember what kind it was, but, man, oh, man, was that just whew, really, really good. It's one of my favorites. I really want to try uh, Blue Brain Cheese. Cheese videos are fun. You know, it gives you, my dad and I something to do. He looks forward to it. I think he'd been dead if it weren't for this channel. Not because of me. I think it just gives him something to look forward to. He likes making videos. It's kind of cool. Uh, no, you know what? It's not a bad idea. I think I I, I probably could use a, a Xanax. I've never had a Xanax. But I probably, is that sort of like a Valium kind of just sedates you? I could probably go for one of those. I'm, I'm really jealous and envious of people who uh, can get on a plane and sleep. I don't know how they do that. I know people that sit on the get on the plane and there's their sleep before the plane takes off. It doesn't really matter. It's not like I can't help the dude. Yeah, you know, I can't help the pilot. If something happens, something happens. But um I don't know, boy, those long flights are something though. They're they're you haven't lived until you've been on like a 16 hour flight. It's a long time to be on a plane. It's a long time to be doing something. 16 hours, you know? It's like, whew. you've never flown yet? Wow, I do drink coffee. Thank you for loving my content, Tim. Glad you watch. Jeremy, you've never been on a plane before, dude? Wow, man. I'd like to be on a plane with your first flight. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I can't sleep on a plane yet. Uh, a plane may crash. Eh. I'm not too worried about the plane crashing. You want know, something funny? I'd rather the plane crash than me have like Alzheimer's and get all squirrely at the end and not recognize my family. I'd rather go out coming back from Manila. You know, it doesn't sound like a pleasant thing to talk about, but for real, you know. I don't want to lose my mind. It freaks me out. Uh how can a guy not joy flying in a commercial airplane but jump out of planes? Yeah, that's pretty crazy, isn't it? What's harder, a 16-hour flight or a 25-hour live stream? 25-hour live stream, way harder. <laughs> Here's the funny thing about those live streams. It's deceiving. The first eight, I, I always think of it in eight-hour blocks. Three eight-hour blocks with a couple hours at the end. Um, you know, the first eight hours go by so fast. And it's like can't believe eight hours. I'm like, eight hours? People griping about working and going to a job this long? It's not that bad. So I don't mind eight hours. Eight hours is pretty fun. It's fun. And there's, you know, it's kind of like a marathon. When you run in a marathon, you get, a, if you're in marathon shape, you get a second wind. The first couple of miles of a marathon are uncomfortable. They don't feel very good. After about two or three miles, it gets really comfortable. And your heartbeat with your feet hitting the ground and your breathing all get in the sink. And it's like euphoric. It's like, the middle 15 miles. Thank you, Megan, girl. Thank you so much. The middle 15 miles of us of a marathon are like, oh, can't tell you how good it feels. That runner's high is amazing. Um, so, you know, you kind of get like that during a live stream. You know, after about eight hours, it's like, wow, it just get really funny. Can't it's more, I mean, it feels good. It's a, plus it's fun. I'm interacting with you guys. It's like we're family, you know. And I get to learn about you guys, and you guys are learning about me. And every single time we do a 25 hour live stream, funny stuff happens. So it's just you know, it's I do get that second wind. 
Megan, you're awesome. Thank you. Hey, uh, Tony from Ohio, funny comment, laying in a hospital with a very bad disease, not looking good. The doctors were just in there and explained your website, show them the most, show them the almost freaking out video. Dude, not a very bad disease. Guys, throw some prayers Tony's way, man. Jeez, I'm sorry, Tony. Let's see, you know what? Doctors don't know it all, man. Hang in there. Hope things improve, man. But thanks for being here, man. Um, how big of a rush was your parachute jumps? My daughter wants to do that. Oh, boy. They're fun. Yeah, I mean, it's um, that's out of my comfort zone. I think people, I, you know, I don't know why. It's really funny. The, the video I did with uh, Shana and um, London has 60,000 views in like a little over a week. My two skydives put together don't have 20,000 views. So I don't understand it. But it's, it's, you know, I'm more proud of them, I think, any, because it's horrifying. I mean, it's super fun, but it's really scary. When they open the door, it's like, you know, most people are never going to be that high up where you can actually look down. When you get in a plane, you can look out and sort of down, but you can't look down like that way. And to be in a plane and look down that way, two and a half miles up, it's a trip. Quite a feeling. It really is. You should do that, Jeremy. Nothing like it. Tony, do me a favor. My email is chasetheheat at gmail.com. Chase the heat at gmail.com. Email me and we'll, we'll email back and forth, okay? If you eat the Reaper in the winter, it will warm you up. Uh, yeah, I bet it would. How's that effect on you? Kind of warms everything up. Um, Lawn dog, I'm going to try to explain my day. I had the family T-shirt on. I had to take a test drive for a repair. Went 30 minutes away and stopped at Taco Bell and ordered the, the order taker recognized the family T-shirt. Shut up. Are you serious? Lawn dog, that's awesome. You know, I was watching Taco Bell, man. You know how we've arrived. How many times have you guys heard me say that the chili industry, the chili scene, the chili community is trending like this? Sitting around watching TV yesterday, was it? Knew it, Taco Bell, the Carolina Reaper Taco. I'm like, it's awesome. We're growing. That made my day, Long Dog. Thank you so much. Ronnie Millsap. Hello, Mr. Scoville. Call me Johnny. Do you think eating extracts in capsules would be as good for pain relief as swallowing it straight? Yeah, but the problem is it would be a bomb for your stomach. There's got to be, a, you know. I, I, I've never, well, I guess that's not true. I have. I broke my toe. My I broke a toe on my foot after a live stream like two years ago, two and a half years ago, early on, first month or two of this channel. I was talking to Dave Miner in my backyard, and I broke my toe. Just snapped. I was like, ah. So the next day, <clears throat> I woke up. It was all swollen, black and blue, and doing this. <laughs> Just horrible. So I did a I, I people all talking about how it uh, you know capsaicin is a uh, uh, painkiller. So I said we're gonna find out. So I did a video where I dropped 13 million scoville pure capsaicin drops, like six or seven drops, literally topically on my broken toe. And then I took like 30 drops and a like three tubes full of the dropper, and. Not only did I not hurt for like hours, and I mean, I'm being honest, the next day, true, the next day, my toe didn't hurt as much as it did the day before. So that was pretty awesome. Your pastor likes the shirt, brother. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Jeremy. That's neat to know. Um, good luck with those pepper, those ghost peppers, Peter. No tarots, no tarots. That's awesome. Uh, Lawn Dog, Megan, totally true. The girl started to tell me about eating a cow labor that the Taco Bell for you brought up in the store what experience she had yep i'll do it um calorie reaper is a funny pepper i imagine the first time that you, they one grows and you're like it's got a tail it looks angry you know if it's all bumply and pip, pimply and all gnarly on the outside yeah, it's like blistered what do you think it's gonna do to your inside i love it all right you guys how are we looking on time you guys want to go another half hour what do you think you want to do another 30 minutes or you want to wrap it up?
Say peppers. Sure. Okay. We'll stay a little bit longer. Do I like peppers as a kid? Yeah. I like, you know, I liked uh, pepperoncinis and jalapenos. Pretty much did. Peter will keep listening. That's the essence of what this whole thing's about. You guys hanging out. I was hanging out as a family. She also said she thinks there's going to be a chili festival in Palm Springs in the next month or so. I'm checking out. Boy, pepper festivals are fun. You want to talk about my happy place? You know, in Valhalla, Vikings in Valhalla. If you die and you go to Valhalla, then what happens is every day you wake up, you go to battle. You fight and you battle and you, you just plunge. And when you die, you die. The next day you get up and you go to battle again. Well, my Valhalla is I go to a pepper festival, go up against the biggest chili heads, meet everybody, kind of hang out with my family, eat tons of peppers, die on the table, wake up the next day, do it again. That'd be awesome. Um, thank you, Megan. Um, thank you, Jeremy, for handling that. That looks to me like somebody you just wanted to eat permanently and block. Why don't you do that? Did you have the reef fries to talk about? I have not, Sean, but I will. I've gotten a lot better. I used to be the biggest jerk when it came to anything commercial. You know what I mean? I was like, oh, it's not hot. I'd want to like run the maker down. I don't do that anymore. I get that mainstream stuff is mainstream stuff. I get it. I get it to a degree. Here's what I mean. If I go have those Reaper fries at Taco Bell and there's no heat, Johnny's going to be okay. I'm not going to like throw the tables up and destroy the, the restaurant. But if I go to Taco Bell and eat the Reaper fries and they don't, I don't taste Reaper, I'm going to be mad. You know what I mean? I, listen, I get it. You can't hurt people mainstream, but... Don't say Reaper if it doesn't too. It's like Reaper. That's what I'm saying. I'm sketchy with Taco Bell too. I think it's Taco Bell is sort of sketchy. What's up, Newfoundland, Canada? Hi, Mike. Good to see you, dude. Oh, my gosh. Riano, Riano. How am I? I'm great. How are you? Hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Um, imagine the guy who goes from the TB Reaper, uh, Taco Bell Reaper fries. I think he can do the real thing. Boy, right? Imagine. Oh, yeah. I think those Reaper fries. I'm ready to step up to a real pod. That would be a nightmare. Can you imagine? All right, Peter says, was it maybe I've answered this, but was there ever a time where you were truly scared from the heat of any pepper or extract? Uh yeah, of course. I'm human. Sir, the first ghost pepper I ever had, I was like, ah, oh, it's a ghost. I was a little nervous. First Reaper, I was a little nervous. I don't get nervous about hot stuff anymore. Um, you know, I did the uh, the first time I did, it was really funny. I, I did the plutonium challenge where I chugged a whole bottle of plutonium nine million extract. I did it twice which is a wholly different story. It was a dumb idea to do it twice, but they both hurt, but they hurt differently. And I was scared of them, but for different reasons. The first time I did, I did the plutonium. I was really scared because I didn't know if it was going to kill me or not. I mean, I wasn't going to really like put my life in jeopardy for the sake of the channel and for views. Cause I don't do it for views. I do it for entertainment value. You know what I mean? It's not for views. It's I want to entertain you. So, um, I was really scared because I didn't know how hot it was going to be, you know, and I was worried. So that was the first one. Um, the second time, time I did it, I knew it wasn't going to kill me because I, I survived it the first time. But the second time I knew how much it was going to hurt and it was just awful. I was sick for so for like three days. The second time I did it, honest to God, the second day, if you like sniffed my arm, you could, it was like capsaicin was coming out of my skin. It was horrible. All right, Johnny, I made a list of YouTube channel videos for sauce that I managed to try. That's pretty cool, Long Dog. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Um, Danny the Dracul. Dracul. Uh, how am I? I'm good. How are you doing? Hope you're good. Um, always, Peter, thanks for hanging out with us. Jason Spratt, love you too, bud. Left eye pat, man, my phone died. My reaction was I almost lost my wallet. <laughs> That's funny. Isn't that funny? Told this story before, man. Tommy, my brother Tommy and I had a business here in Reno, long time marketing company we owned, long, long time ago. And I had a little flip phone. Flip. And I was leaving one day. I was like, I was like, it didn't even do one of those numbers. It was just so. Because now it's different. 
So I was like, man, I lost my phone, Tommy. He's like, what do you mean you lost it? I'm like, I don't, I don't know where it is. He's like, so let's go buy a new one. It, it was a 15-minute inconvenience. I live in a 10-minute town. Anywhere you need to get in Reno, you're only 10 minutes at max from anywhere else. So 15 minutes later, I had a phone. You lose your phone now. I want to hear what happened when I was in uh, Salt Lake during my most recent 24-hour layover. Uh, I was sitting there talking to this dude. Really cool. He's like 40. John Marco, thank you so much. We pay off that laptop yet? No, not yet, but we're working on it. We're close, John. But this guy's like, a, he's like almost my age and he races motocross and he has like a GoPro on his head. I'm not in the airport, but just a good dude. So we started talking and I was watching some of his videos. We had some time to kill. So I was watching his and he was watching mine. Um, it was very. Hang on a minute. I saw something. Something. I'm seeing things, people. I just read a comment that isn't there. Did anybody? I just, it's cool. Uh, anyway, so I'm sitting there in the airport with this dude. We were just watching each other's videos. And the whole time we're sitting there, um, there's a phone next to us. And I thought it was like, it happens all the time where somebody plugs in the phone, puts it down, says, I'm going to take off. No one, make sure nobody leaves with my phone. So we're still like, yeah, yeah. So we're sitting here and uh, all the flights took off. So the planes, the airport's empty except me and this dude. I'm like, man, that girl left her phone here. So I grabbed the phone and it was locked. So I couldn't open it up. But while I was sitting there, she was getting messages. You know, like you get messages and like all the different, um, the messages were, even though it was blocked, the messages were appearing like this on the front of her screen. So I was looking at it, I was like, and it was so cool. In one of the messages, it had her name and the flight number that she just got on. So it was really cool. I grabbed the phone. I ran up to the gate. I said, Judy, she's on that plane. This is her phone. Got to get her a phone. So that was really cool because I knew I saved her that panic in the moment. of like, oh, my God, I lost my phone. You know what I mean? Because you listen, if you lose your phone and the right person finds it, like me, get your phone back. You do it, the wrong person finds it. And they know a shady person or two. Talk about like a nightmare for like stealing your identity. Wow. Hello, everyone, especially the man of the show, Johnny Scoble. Thank you, Shane. Good to see you, dude. Um, uh, found and returned the phone to a guy at Denver coming off the train in Union Station. Man, it's a pretty cool thing to do something like that. It was really weird, too, because I dropped the phone off. And I'm walking back to where that dude was, and this man walked up to me. I didn't know who he was. He walks, he was, I saw what you just did. I'm like, what did I do? He's like, you brought that phone back. You turned in. That was the right thing to do. Thank you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that isn't something that you need to be thanked for. You know what I mean? <clears throat> I told my kids when they were little, integrity, the word integrity is doing the right thing, even if nobody is ever going to know about it. And that's how I tried to raise my kids. So that's why it was kind of silly. Like, who's, who's going to keep a phone? I mean, um, yeah, giving hot peppers as a joke is not cool. I'm not into pranking people. You know why I'm not into pranking people? Um, you can get a good yuck, a laugh out of it. But you know what? What if that person you give them, a, you give that pepper to, is never going to eat another pepper because you're a jerk? And I'm not talking anybody who did this or anybody who's, you know, I would never do that. I mean, peppers are a beautiful thing. I wouldn't want to turn somebody away from peppers forever because I wanted to get a laugh at somebody's expense. You know. Uh, Megan, what I like about your vids is that I'm watching you and not some celeb like Charlie Sheen or George Clooney, right? You know what's really weird? I can't imagine being those guys. I was just in London, you know, at the uh, Guilford Chili Festival. And everywhere I went, people knew me. And it's like that at festivals. I mean, it's not like that when I walk down Main Street here in Reno, but I go to a festival, I'm like an A-lister. Everybody seems to know me. It's sort of weird. So I, I love that. It's fun. It's people coming up. I take pictures of everybody. I sign stuff, pictures with kids. That's I live for that. But I can't imagine, Jason, thank you so much, dude. I can't imagine if every single time I walked out of my door or my house, it was like a pepper festival, no matter where I went. That would freak me out so bad. I can't even imagine. You know what I mean? Because eventually you're going to, that's how you feel. I feel bad for, uh, for so, real celebrities. Because they got a tough gig, you know, because eventually you can't be on all the time. 
you know, at some point you're going to go, you're going to say something stupid or have a dumb look on your face or ask the wrong question or have a skirmish with somebody and they're going to needle it. You know what I mean? I told that story. I was in um, another layover. I was in Houston. I was about to unload on these people. I'm so upset, so bummed out um, about how things are going. I was about to unload on this person, and this little kid tapped me on the arm. And he goes, you, you're Johnny Scoville. I was like, I, two seconds more, and I was going to just like ruin that kid's image of me forever. So I got lucky. I'm just, it gets, you know, I can't imagine being famous, famous. It would be too much. Uh, Sean, do I watch Nuff on YouTube? He mentions you. I kind of like him, but the language is too color for my style. I, yeah, listen, I dig Nuff. He's entertaining. Love Nuff. And look, we all have different styles, you know? I mean, I, I, I keep it clean because people, my kids watch this. My mom and dad watch this. You know, your kids may watch this and I don't want to do anything. I don't, I don't ever want to, I can't imagine somebody saying, oh, Johnny, I can't believe you said that. You know what I mean? I don't ever want to do that. I have an example, a role model, whether it, you know, so but that doesn't mean I can't appreciate the heck out of Nuff. Nuff is hilarious, man. Love it. Yeah, I, I'm a big Nuff fan. In fact, here's the funny thing. I'd love to do a video with Nuff. That would be fun as can be to do a collab with him. You know, we could do one for his channel, one for mine, just kind of bleep out the one for my channel, let his fly. I'm not a prude, you guys. You got to understand something. I'm a mild-mannered guy, and I'm a pacifist, you know, and I don't. I keep a clean tongue. You guys never heard me swear. It doesn't mean I have it. And I'm a pacifist, but if somebody wrongs somebody I love, they'll have a problem. So, you know, we all have our moments. There's a season for everything. Uh, Londog, she actually ate part of the Carolina Reaper, so I told her about the UK Chili Queen, your latest contest, because she can now appreciate it. But it's like, absolutely. Uh, is it possible to cheat in a pepper contest, i.e. eat Vaseline? I don't know. Imagine Vaseline's got uh, several uses, but eating it, I'd rather hurt. Um, I've heard of a few things. I've heard, uh, seen somebody stand up in front of people right before doing a, a Guinness book. Nothing in the rules about it. Pulls out a stick of butter, ate half a stick of butter in the 60 seconds leading up to the contest. Ate a stick of, half a stick of butter. He didn't win. Um, I don't know, lidocaine and stuff that numbs things. Maybe that would help. I don't know. I don't know. I, you know, I don't know. Probably, I, you know, there's no, here's the only way I've seen people cheat. You want to know how I've seen people cheat? In the Guinness book, you got to do one, a pastor said a great record. Ah, hoorah. Um, you got to eat one pepper at a time. You put it in your mouth, chew it up, swallow it before you can put a second one in, right? Well, what these guys are doing is they'll put one in the mouth, chew it up, act like they kind of swallowed it, stick a second one in their mouth, look like they swallowed it, but really they're keeping it in their mouth. Put a third one in the mouth, chew it up, and swallow three. I'm telling you, if I could put three peppers, in, three reapers in my mouth at once, chew them up, swallow it, do that four times, I could probably hold the record. But when you do it one at a time, it's really, really hard to do that. You want to hear Johnny answer what? I didn't see the question. Jeremy, what's the – what question do you want to see me answer? Because I'll answer it. Uh, I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't know. I, if you got to cheat, I've never been a fan of cheating in anything. I mean – I don't know. I hate to be that guy that plays baseball in the, in the you know, big leagues, hits a million home runs, and then there's an asterisk by your name in the – you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So, Jeremy, I didn't uh, – if you can, type in what question you want me to answer because I, it slipped by me. I didn't see it. Been eating habaneros this week. They've been hobbing harder than uh, usual. Lance Armstrong. Interesting. I don't know where it kind of – Talk about your cheat, huh? Man, there's Alex. Yeah, he wasn't just a cheat. You know what he did? He cheated and then bullied the people and gave it to them and hurt people financially and legally that were telling the truth. He's been he's an off. I mean, look, I'm all about people redemption. I'm all about, you know, what you did yesterday doesn't define you as a human being. But that dude's a tool. I'm serious, man. He did that. I, and, and, you know, the end justifies me. Oh, look how much money you raised for cancer. Yeah, maybe so, but he lied. There's so many kids. Listen, I'm just an idiot. I'm a peon. A peon. But I have people that look up to me. That dude had people and kids and cancer survivors and cancer sufferers looking up to him. And he did that. If I ever ended up in an elevator alone, him, I would slap the taste out of his mouth. That's a bad dude. I mean it. 
Can't imagine how bad that is. But you know what? It's like um, Scarlet Letters, man. That dude, he's got to walk around and be Lance Armstrong. You know what I mean? He's got to carry that around. And I'm telling you, man, nobody lies to you more in your life than you do. And, man, he's lying to himself a lot just to be able to walk out in public. Sorry. Didn't mean to get on a rant there. I detest liars. I can't stand liars. I won't ever lie to you, you guys. Um, yeah, I've gotten really lucky with the uh, lawnmowers. And it's been a pretty motor-free summer. It's bizarre. Oh, the Vaseline one. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I never did the Vaseline thing. It's hard to sleep at night when you know you've done wrong, man. Yeah, the other thing is this. You know, the other thing that I'm big with, and I got this from my dad. Um, to me, I don't like regret. I don't, you know what? You'll never hear me say, oh, I should have said, or man, I wish I had said, I'm not that guy. You're going to. I am not going to live with, oh, man, I had the perfect opportunity. I didn't say it. That's not me, man. Usually I try to deliver it with tact. You guys know what the word tact is? Tact is what makes the truth palatable. You can tell the person the truth with tact. You can tell them they're fat and ugly. But if you do it tactfully, but, man, you say the wrong thing, the, the truth the wrong way, and you can crush people. You know, words cut deeper than knives. Junior's going to be with me again uh, soon, uh, a month and a half, two months tops, I think. Cannot wait. Taking him on all these trips with me. Uh, that boy is going to – listen, <clears throat> I got out of high school. I worked my – I have a great work ethic. One thing I'm really proud of, I've got a brutal work ethic. And since I graduated, I've been working my tail off. And not that he's not going to have to work. It's not that I'm giving him anything. But, boy, that kid's going to have a different path than I have. He's going to have to earn everything, you know, but he's going to get to see things this year that I didn't get to see unless I looked online or until this year. He's going to, going to take him to all kinds of cool places. He's just a, he's a wonderful young man. You know, he's a good kid. Proud of him. All right, guys, we're going to go for another 15 minutes. I want to wrap this thing up. Felix, I have a few friends. Listen, you know what? I have I don't have that many friends. I have a million family members, but two people that know me in my real life – you know, it's, I travel so much. I kind of live in my house, you know, when's the 25 hour live stream starting hot sauce, junkie, Tim, uh, 6 PM on the 16th. I think it's the 16th, 16th. Um, yeah. Hey Tim, when are you going to do your, your, a, a long live stream? Awful lot of fun. Um, Pastor David, do me a favor, email me that at chasetheheat at gmail.com. I would love to get into a wonderful conversation with you about that. I just don't do that on the channel. We avoid anything divisive. So, but please email me. I'd be happy to talk to you about that. An open book, just not an open live stream. Uh, South, what about South Carolina? Um, South Carolina is the big contest. It's going to be, uh, live streamed on um, in 2020, I did just say the name. I don't want to get in trouble. I did sign an NDA. But that'll be here. That'll be on uh, this weekend. And, uh, oh, you know what? You guys want in on a little bit of cool information? All right. Uh, whoops. Hold on a second. No, I thought I had it. I don't. Oh, is that it? Nope, that's not either. Um, I'll, I'm going to be, I'll do this tomorrow. I'll, I'll do an email tomorrow. Uh, email. I'll do a live stream tomorrow. Or maybe it's, it'll be a, just a video I upload. But I'm going to give the location and the uh, time for a, a meet and greet over and above the one I, I told you about at 183 Main Street at 3 o'clock on the 3rd. This is going to be on Sunday, the day after. Um, we're gonna, and there's one the day before as well. What is in a restaurant where the chef is a high end restaurant? My partner David Foy um, has uh, talked to the, the this uh, chef and he's given them a bunch of super hots and some mash and he's making a scary meal for me. Bearing in mind that I have one of the scariest contests the following day, but so I've got that. That'll be a cool meet and greet. But the cool one is going to be on Sunday, you guys. It's going to be um, at a bar and grill. Um, we're going to be handing out, I've got like 
all kinds, tons of, of stuff to give away. Just come out. Tons of stuff from David Foy, Blazing Nuts, Tunes of Terror. We're going to be giving away lots of stuff. But we're also going to be doing a 10-person um, a uh, Death Nut Challenge. Not the Death Nut 2.0, just the Death Nut. But I'll be giving them out to everybody. You don't, you don't need to pay for it. You just show up and sign up, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I do uh, the West Coast. Yeah, I do need to come to the West Coast. I haven't yet, but I will. Um, do I know of any deals or coupons on the CCN bar or CN, CCN bar or will have it do a live stream? I'll have something for the live stream, Tim. Nothing right now because we haven't actually released it yet. Uh, Cowgirl's daddy. How are you doing? Did you eat that pepper like you said? I think you said you were going to eat a pepper. Um, Shane, that'd be cool. I'd love to meet you. It's a fun, fun place to hang out, isn't it? I dig it, Jason. Um, I'm sorry, Dustin. Yeah, make sure you get that that notification. You know what? Sometimes if people think they have the notification, it doesn't happen. Unsubscribe, subscribe again, and then hit notification again, and you'll come back up. Uh, it is a legit family. Boy, isn't that the truth? Desiree Donovan, shut your mouth. Good to see you, girl. The party can start. Desiree is here. Um... Is anybody there from Sweden want to start a pepper club? Elix, go on Facebook and look up Jonathan Skogsdeed. He is my uh, Sweden connection. He's the purveyor of all things putrid. He's the guy who got me the uh, uh, Stroming and the uh, Hakarl, that nasty rotten shark. Loved it. Oh, by the way, you guys want to hear something crazy? I never shared this with you guys. You guys, I don't know if you guys saw. I did this, the uh, a coral. It's this rotten shark. They catch it in Iceland, cut its head off, throw it in the sand, like bury it for a long time. Then they clean it off and like let it rot. Is it raining all of a sudden? That was really strange. I'm hallucinating. Um, anyway, so I did the Hakarl. Uh, it's H A K A R L, Hakar, or Hakar, whatever it is. Um, anyhow, uh, Desiree, you're not leaving, are you? Stick around, girl. Unless you can't, then it was good seeing you. I'll talk to you later. But um, I, I got a second order of Hakar in the mail. So I have a whole fresh package of Hakar in my casa. I'll talk to you later, Desiree. Have a good night, girl. Um, I eat hot stuff every day. I don't know. I've done training for marathons and sporting events where you had a training. You took a few days off before the event so you wouldn't kill yourself. I eat hot stuff every day. So The first one did not kill me. They did send another. But I'll tell you what, the hell, Carl, is interesting. But the, the most foul thing I have ever eaten in my life was ever was the Sostroming. Man, there ought to be like a Sostroming like museum. There probably is in Sweden where you go in there and you can smell an open can of fresh Sostroming. I shouldn't say fresh. It's an oxymoron. A can of really old Sostroming. That smell is just I – mean, it's remarkable that they can get anything to smell like that. It's really amazing. Uh, roasted Dougie on meatloaf. Roasted Dougie's good stuff. Um, you know what I had uh, tonight? I had uh, a burger tonight, and I put some of that uh, chili of the valley, black garlic, uh, spicy ketchup. Man, was that good. It wasn't hot. There's no heat in it, but flavor's ridiculous. It's like you said, it smells like dead stuff, and you're eating it. Yeah, it's pretty rough. Doesn't smell like a, like I said in the video. It doesn't smell like a dead fish though. It smells like a dead like football team or something. It's, it's, it's bad, very bad. Just got a message from Ed Curry. Kind of good. Um, so strumming actually don't taste anything but salt, but, but it feels like snot. Well, here's the deal. Apparently, I did it wrong. You're supposed to wash. Supposed to wash off that fish because apparently that sludge that's on the outside does not taste good. Did I do that? No, it's awful. Kippers and habanero sauce. I love kippers, huge fan from Cleveland. How cool! 
arch nemesis of five. Thank you. What's a great flavorful sauce for barbecue which has heat and very flavorful? Boy, you're not going to like this answer. Do you know what I do? My favorite barbecue sauce is essentially any, you know, there's so many different kinds. Just about any store barbecue, but I always doctor it up with a bunch of pep, uh, salt and a bunch of pepper you know, powder. And that's what I do. Pepper X is not released. Yes, it released yet, but they will. Uh, I don't know of Las Vegas having a pepper convention. They haven't contacted me. I'm sure when they do, they will. I haven't talked to them yet. But, um, I mix apple, onion, garlic, any pepper I can. Boy, apple, onion, or, or apple, onion, and garlic. Famous Dave's with Fear This. Wouldn't be bad. You know what you could do? I hate to say this. Dave's Insanity Sauce. If you put some of that in some barbecue sauce and you do it the right amount, you'll get good heat and you won't taste the extract. Put too much in and you'll be miserable. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this thing up. We're about eight minutes away, seven minutes away. Any last questions? No way. Randy Keaton. Hi, brother. Can't wait to see you this weekend, man. Um, can't wait to see you, dude. I'm worried about what you're giving Ed. I know you're bringing some, some pods. Johnny, am I Jewish? No, I'm not. Um, I've been asked that a few times in my life. Interesting question. Not sure why he asked, but is an unripe hotter as a uh, than a ripe one is hot? Yeah, it's hard to say. I don't know. I'm not quite sure. Randy is a, a, a unripe pod hotter than one as they become ripe. You will know more than I do. <clears throat> um, see you later, Megan. Take care, girl. We're going to wrap this up in just a minute, guys. Seven more minutes, and we're going to finish this thing. What's well, harder than Mad Dog 357 Gold? Oh, my gosh. A lot. A lot. Um, I personally think that uh, Fear This, Fiery Fool, Exoresco, Deborah Random, Forrest Hammer are all as hot. I think you are courageous. Jack, you're so funny. I'm not courageous, man. I'm just not scared of dying. That can give the illusion that somebody's brave. You know what I mean? Not that brave. I'm just not worried about dying. But thank you for saying that. Blair's death sauce will jack up your stomach. It will. Blair's, man. Da bomb, another nasty sauce. Nasty, nasty, nasty. Um, what is the best tasting super hot pepper? It's all subjective up to you. You know, there are some people that love floral pods. I hate them. My favorite tasting hot pepper is I like seven pot uh, yellow primos. Uh, I don't know. I, my favorite pods are yellow pods because they're fruitier and a little bit more uh, they have citrus notes to them. And I really appreciate it. All right, folks, five minutes and we're going to stick a fork at this thing. Put it in the books, as they say. Any last questions? I'd be happy to entertain them. You know what? I've been live streaming for how long? For one hour and three minutes, I'm still at 74% on my laptop. Very happy about that. What was better than yesterday? Was today better than yesterday? Excuse me. Was today better than yesterday? Yeah, yesterday was a drag because of the laptop. Do you listen, anytime you got to wake up and shell out 700 bucks that you really can't shell out, it sucks. But I have faith that things will all work out. I like working without a net. You know, I think if you work with a net, this is, we're going to wrap it up on this. If you work with a net, you know what I mean? When I say that, you're on a tightrope and you were, it's a metaphor, obviously, but you work with a net. When you're walking across the rope, what are you looking at? The net, right? You want to get that rope you're standing on, look really, really clear, take the net away. I like working without a net. There's something exciting about that. That's why I love live streams. That's why I love a 25-hour live stream because anything can happen. And I love working without a net. It was really cool. I was in uh, New Zealand. We were getting ready to do this morning show live. <clears throat> I put powder all over me, which I hated. 
So I said, okay, oh, hey, Johnny, this is what we're going to do. We're going to come out. He's at the comedian, a local comedian was going to eat a pepper with me. Um, so he was, the comedian was going to come out, sit down next to you. And, and so we went through the whole thing of what we we're doing. Let's, let's do a practice run. It's okay. So they did the queue, and there was a studio, a big studio audience, which is kind of cool because I haven't ever filled anything in front of a studio audience before. But we did, we filmed it for like three or four minutes. We we're done, and they're like, "You've done this before." I like working without a net. Really interested in the tube tariff training, uh, finding a selection of pods, not easy. Growing some hot. Take the time. And they do. It's a great way to build your tolerance. That's for sure. Good night, left eye pack. Good to see you, dude. Um, mods are always great. The family's great. You know, this is the easy. Look, my mods work hard because they show up and I'm prolific and I'm on live a lot. So they work hard. But you know what? Go log on to somebody else's channel. See what their mods go through. You know why? Because some of the nastiest people say the nastiest things. We just, this is a goodwill factory. Everybody's here is, for the most part, is super, super positive, And that has a, a way of sort of repelling the negative people. Light and dark can't occupy the same room. And the Scoville squad's got to win all the time. I love you guys, man. All right, we're going to wrap this up. We'll do one more question. Last question. Randy, hoping to be there this Saturday. Um, I know you're bringing some pods, some scary ones, dude. Love the show, brother. Keep them coming. Thank you, Sean. Um, trust me. He's right. Uh, for a lot of channels. I am, Alex. Thank you. Um, Blake Hilton, relative to the channel. Love you, man. Love your enthusiasm. Thank you. You know, I got a family like you guys. It's easy for me to be enthusiastic. Do I eat most of my meals with chili on it? Uh, of some sort. Salt, powders, sauces, every meal is something for sure. Um, Johnny, we're smart enough to know when a troll when we see one. <laughs> yep. Um, jo Justin Staggers, much love, fam. You guys are awesome. All right, we're gonna wrap it up now. I love you guys a lot. You're the best family there is. You know what? No, we're gonna go till six till uh, eight thirty. Two more minutes. Good to see you, Dustin. Thank you guys all for hanging out. Mods, thank you, Megan. Thank you, Randy, um, Jeremy. Um, Desiree's not here anymore, but thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Really excited for the next three months. There's just, it's bop, 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 just place after place after place, promoting the family, you know? What makes extract so dang bad? It's uh, the high alcohol. They use super high alcohol to extract all the capsaicin out of the pot. And it just loads up. And so you get super concentrated capsaicin. That's why. Um, the world is full of negative, positive, breeds progression. Love you guys. Hope you be part of this for a long time. Me too, Jason. Listen, you know what? Here's the, the last thing I'm going to leave you with. Love breeds love. Hate breeds hate. Somebody can't hate you if you're loving them. There's a time for everything. If somebody hits you, it's on. But you know what? You can get a lot more with love than you can with anything else. Love breeds love. Remember that. All right, guys. I love you a lot. I'm wrapping this thing up now. I will catch you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow is the last live stream I'm doing before we head over to South Carolina. Lots of footage and live stream and stuff that we're going to be filming for you. Love you guys a lot. You're awesome. I'm Johnny Scoville. This is Chase the Heat.